Hello, my friends. Happy Sunday. Hope you've had a wonderful week. Hey, today's lesson is going to be about somebody that you may not know quite as well as you've known some of our other Bible characters, but um, you definitely know his dad, all right? Because his dad is David. Do you guys remember David from David and Goliath, right? Of course, you guys all know who he is. Well, this is David's son, Solomon. And this story takes place when David is much, 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 much older and hopefully much, 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 much wiser. All right, Solomon, the story about Solomon is talking about wisdom. And so we're going to learn about that today. But let's take it back to where the story starts. And um, David has gotten much older and he's been through a lot, right? Do you guys remember he was a child when he fought Goliath, right? Do you guys remember when Samuel anointed him with oil and told him he was going to be king, right? So remember that because that's going to happen again too. And um, so Samuel, we talked about a few weeks ago. I love showing you guys how all these people fit together and how the family of God just keeps moving forward all in God's plan. So here we are. David is much older and he's going to be telling us about um, Solomon. In his old age, when he was, when all was peaceful, you know what? The kingdoms were not always peaceful, but this was a time David had gotten older and wiser, and his peaceful, this kingdom was peaceful, and things were being able to be taken care of by the people that David had put in charge. And um, he spent his time getting everything ready for his son Solomon to build the temple for the Lord. He collected great quantities of gold and silver and brass and iron and precious stones, all to build the temple, which is the house of God. Now, David had already decided. He knew that Solomon was going to be the next king. That's who he chose. That's who God chose. And so he knew that Solomon was going to be it. But as we've seen in many times now in our stories about brothers, right? Sometimes when one brother is chosen, the other brothers don't like that so much, right? And so, you know, Solomon did have several brothers, David's sons, and one of them even tried to kill David. This other one that we're going to talk about today, he thought that he should be king. So he made a plan and he went out, he gathered all the leaders and he thought, okay, I'm going to talk about this and then you guys are going to lift me up as king. But as happens very often with the help of God, David found out. Wicked plans are also often found out because of God making that apparent to people. David found out, and he said, no, my plan is for Solomon to be king. God's plan is for Solomon to be king, and here's what he did. So Nathan, the prophet, and Zagok, the priest, took Solomon out of the city. The priest then anointed um, Solomon with oil. Do you guys remember when Samuel anointed David? This is kind of the same thing. The priest was anointing Solomon with oil. The trumpets blew, by the, the soldiers blew those loud trumpets. All the people came running to see what was going on. When they heard the shout, Long live King Solomon! They all cheered and shouted again, Long live King Solomon! They joined in a procession, so a big parade, right? And they followed the soldiers marching and blaring their trumpets. Then Solomon came in riding on David's mule. Now, for that, for him to be on David's animal, right, on David's mule or donkey, that was a big sign. That was a big sign. And the soldiers were marching on each side of them. Next came more soldiers, and then the people shouting, Long live King Solomon. The people were singing and dancing, and the flutes were playing, and they were shouting so loudly that the earth echoed with the noise. So it was a huge celebration. They were so excited to know that David, as he was getting older, was passing, passing it on and that Solomon was going to be the next king. So how do you think this other son felt? He had a plan. Was it God's plan? No, but he had a plan. When he heard all his guests at the feast heard the great noise, they moved to Jerusalem and they found the alarm. What was all that noise? And the priest said that they had named, David had named Solomon as the king. He has sent his own bodyguards of soldiers with him, and he gave him to ride on the king's mule. Nathan the prophet and the priest have anointed him. 
great company of people that were with the others um, announced it, and they shouted with joy, All hail to King Solomon! When his other, the other son's friends heard this, they got frightened. And they ran away. Everyone quickly slipped away and went home. So here's the other son, right? And all his friends that around him that he was trying to say, I'm going to be the next king. When they heard that Solomon, the trumpets were blaring, he was riding on David's mule, and all the crowd was around him, they just ran away and said, no, 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 you are not the king. Solomon is the king. So it was set in stone. All right. Before David died, he called a great meeting of all the chief men of Israel. He stood up and told them that God had chosen Solomon to be king and to build his temple. He urged them to remember to keep all the commandments of the Lord. Then David turned to Solomon in the presence of all the great company and said to him, this is very important, all right? And you, Solomon, my son, Know the God of your father and serve him with a perfect heart and a willing mind, for the Lord could read all your thoughts. So he's telling him, Solomon, follow in the Lord. Go from what I've learned about the Lord and take the next step. Always follow him. Don't fall away. Always follow him. Stay close to the Lord, for the Lord knows your thoughts. He's there, and he'll put good thoughts into your mind and help you if you stay close to him. So that's what David wanted for his son. Then David gave Solomon the plan of the temple, which God would help him build. He said to the people, Solomon, my son, whom God has chosen, is still young, and the work is great, for the house is not for man, but for the Lord. So he's saying, Solomon's young. Will you guys please help him? Because he's building a house not for himself. He's building a house for God. All right? So all of you who love God, come together and help him build this house. I have prepared gold and silver and brass and iron and wood and marble and precious stones. Who of you now is willing to help? So he called out and he said, help my son. All the people offered to help Solomon. They gave a great deal of silver and gold and iron themselves. And all the people blessed the Lord God of their fathers and bowed down their heads and worshiped Lord the Lord. Solomon made a great sacrifice of offering thousands of burnt offerings to God. And that night, God appeared to Solomon in a dream. All right, so here he is. He says, yes, I'm going to be king. Yes, Father, I'm going to follow God. I'm going to do as you asked, and I'm going to build the temple. And then here's the dream that God gave Solomon. Solomon said, Lord, thou has made me a king instead of my father David, and I'm only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and here I am in the middle of thy people, a people so great that they cannot be counted. Give me, therefore, an understanding heart so that I may be able to rule thy people and to tell what is right and what is wrong. So here's Solomon saying, I'm just a kid. How do I know what's right and wrong? How do I know what to do? And he's asking the Lord, God was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. He said, because you have asked for this and have not asked for a long life or riches or a life um, of your enemies, the life for killing your enemies, you haven't asked me for any of these greedy things. All right? You haven't asked me for stuff. You haven't asked me for taking all your enemies away. You haven't asked me for just so much riches. But instead, you've asked for wisdom and understanding Behold, I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there shall never be any other man as wise as you. And I have also given you riches. Because he loved Solomon so much. He said, you didn't ask for riches, but I'm going to bless you with those. But most of all, I'm going to bless you with wisdom. He said, I'm going to give you riches and honor too. And if you walk in my ways... As your father David did, I will give you a long life too. Then Solomon awoke, and it was a dream. But the dream was sent by God, and it came true. For Solomon became the wisest man who has ever lived. He was also very rich and highly honored, and he lived a very long life. All right, so 
David knew Solomon was to be king. He took him out. They anointed him in front of all the people. They made sure that everyone knew Solomon was to be the king. And David said, what I want is for you to follow the Lord, to trust the Lord, to stay close to the Lord, to serve the Lord, and to build my temple, build the temple of the Lord. Now, why did um, David want him to build the temple? Because he didn't want people looking at the palace or Solomon's palace, which was David's palace, and thinking, that's who you worship. Look at the Lord. Look at the temple that's built for the Lord. That's who you worship. All right? So I hope you guys will see that um, the temple was a very important part. Now, just for fun, I bent, built a little temple. I built it out of marshmallows. What do you think? You guys want to build a temple? I hope you guys will build a temple, but think about it. It wasn't made of marshmallows, was it? It was full of silver and gold and jewels and beautiful things to honor the Lord. So build it out of Legos. Build it out of graham crackers. Build it out of marshmallows. But build the temple. And as you are thinking about that, think about what that temple meant. What that temple meant and why it was so important to David that it was built. My other question for you guys this week is, what would you ask for? Solomon, even as a child, was wise and asked God for wisdom. He said, help me understand your ways, Lord. What if we all prayed that? Instead of when we pray, asking for things, asking for help with something, asking for things that we wanted, what if we ask God for wisdom to see the way he thinks? Wouldn't we be so much better off knowing the way God thinks? Let me pray for you guys right now and just ask for that. Lord Jesus, we love you so much, and we want to know your thoughts, Lord. Help us fill our minds with wisdom. Help us to understand your way of thinking. Help us to see things not the way we want them, but the way you have them planned for us, Lord. Help us to see and know your will for us and for those around us, Lord. Help us to have wisdom. We love you and we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for loving us so well. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, I hope you will seek his wisdom. Build a temple to show that you are worshiping God. All right, what, what, is, what is the way that people are going to see God in you this week? So the temple was to help people see God, right? How now? You don't have to build a temple, a real temple. We're doing that for fun. But you don't have to build a real temple. You, you can be the one that shines light and so people see God. So my last challenge for you today is to find out how you can shine God's light to other people. Can you be as shiny as that gold and silver and precious stones? I know you can. Ask your mom and dad, help me, help me to have wisdom, follow God's plan, and shine the light of God so others all around you will see God and want to worship him too. All right, you guys, you got some big challenges this week. I know you could do them. All right, I'll see you next week. Love y'all.